So uh, what I want to talk about is how uh, I build this particular device, which is a uh, kind of a tool chest. Basically, you may have seen this particular design that we were working on earlier. So the first thing I want to do is I want to basic, uh, to break it apart, uh, this basic, this solid apart, and, uh, and create some parting lines. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm creating a, a parting line, and then I'm going to mirror it, mirror it. And once I've mirrored it, uh, I'll join them together. And once I've joined them together, uh, then I'll use the offset command, the offset outline command. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'll fill it at first. Here's what I'm doing. I'm filling filling that line. Now I'm doing the mirror, the offset man. You can see I'm using 0.5 millimeters and using caps, cap ends. So you can see I've done that. Now I just go into the Boolean command and hit the difference button and then delete the actual curve. And now I've got it a full-blown uh, Boolean subtraction. So I've not, now I've got the lid done. Okay, so the next step, I'll go in and I will change the actual uh, geometry here. Uh, it in half. I want to actually only work on one quarter of this. So I'm going to uh, divide it in half uh, depth wise and then divide it in half, half width wise. Uh, again, by using a, uh, uh, a trim curve uh, and Boolean subtract. And once I've done that, I delete everything and now I've got just this corner that I want to work with. So first I want to carve out from this corner the actual shape that I want the final chest to be so that's what I'm doing here is I'm again using a polyline creating a very simple polyline uh, and uh, uh, boolean subtracting uh, boolean subtracting that polyline from the actual solid so now I've got the shape that I want um, and next I'm going to actually put in these handles right on this on this bevel edge so we've already gone through this bevel edge treatment once but We'll do it again really quick. This time I've got to use the three points because the center point won't work. So I use the three point curve here. So I'm going to draw a curve, make it pretty large. And I'll use, again, as you remember, the Boolean uh, merge feature to separate all that out. Now that I've got that separated, I can go in and build a fairly large chamfer, which is what I've done here. I'm using 12. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and union both of those back. So now I've got that little spot right in there. Once that's done, I'll um, add some fillets uh, around the surface and uh, here, got that done. Use it a little bit smaller than that, maybe 3.5. And now, uh, again, we're going to add these fillets here as well, the same, so they're matching. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, bevel these out. First, I thought maybe a fillet would look good, but I decided no. We'll go back and, and use the bevel command like we did earlier so we can keep the design language consistent. And uh, there we are. Now I'm going to take this group and I'm going to basically I'm going to take that surface and, and extend it by uh, extruding it all the way down. But it turns out I really can't do that because it, it won't snap to that bottom piece. So I'm going to take and create these uh, outlines, these curves, and it turns out they don't work either. Uh, by lofting them, uh, the, ex the, the exact curves in there. So I'm going to just remove one, take one, and copy it, and paste it, and join it. There you go, joined it, and then I'm going to copy that, paste it, and move it to the top. So I can select both of them, loft them, and now I'm good to go. So now I union it, or Boolean union everything, and I'm going to add a little fillet on the edge here. Uh, and it turns out, as I keep trying to add a fillet, it's not going to it's not going to work because of the fact that I guess the shape is just too complicated. So I'm going to go back and 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 boolean them before I do the or I mean fill them before I do the boolean. Now that I got that done, now I'm going to take both, uh, and then I'm also going to actually do the same with here, add some more fillets along here as well before I do the boolean. So we've got that done. And once that's done, I'll take both of them and I'll boolean union them. So I've got the whole thing. So there's my handle. So really from here on, it's uh, pretty much an exercise in uh, dividing up the geometry. So here I am, I'm going to create a, uh, uh, a set of parting lines here. Uh, again, I'll fill up the uh, intersection. That's a two millimeter fillet. I probably should have done a little larger than that. But then again, I do the offset, get the offset. Uh, and I'm not going to subtract this because I know I, need to, I, want, I don't want to go completely through. 
So I'll go to the side view um, and uh, I want to make sure I know exactly what I want to cut off in the side view. So I've got it figured out. And there we go. We'll just take that align somewhere right here. And again, do the uh, Boolean offset. And then, uh, I'm sorry, the offset uh, in the cap lines, then use it to Boolean and subtract. So now I've got that front face created, and then I quickly add this, this little quadrant up here. So the next challenge is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to put uh, a little relief along the bottom because it's going to be kind of a, a, door, a pocket door that comes out of here. So here's the actual bottom detail. I'll fill it that. And do an offset on it. And then pull it and subtract it. And that's good. Uh, and then let's go ahead and start building the, the pocket door uh, area. So we'll come here. Again, we're doing the same thing. Uh, do an offset with the cap edges. Uh, and then pull in subtracting it. So now I've got the basic geometry and now I just need to add the door. So for, for the door, uh, I want to create a little kind of a pocket groove where you can put your hand in and pull the drawer, pull the door out. Uh, pull the, it's kind of like a, a pivoting uh, trash can kind of thing. It comes out of it. So I'll come in here and I'm basically making all, you know, lining these up so they're straight, selecting all these points, using a vertical alignment tool on the bottom of those, and then make sure that some staying consistent. Let's go ahead and add uh, radiuses to uh, the corners, uh, to the edges here, or the corners of this particular cutting curve here. Uh, once we get that down, let's go ahead and that, first I start to, I bull and subtract it, which is a mistake. What I really want is Boolean merge. And so you'll see what happens when I subtract it. Okay, so I've got it as a way. So that's not really what I want to keep that surface. So here I am. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep the surface. I've got it. Uh, let's go ahead and cut that surface a little bit so I can have that, that scoop we were talking about. So here we go. That's actually, I can't barely see in this thing, especially. So what I need to do is I need to flip that view from right to left. There's a shortcut key that we use for that. So you'll see that happen here. There you go. Now I can see it much better. I'll go in here and I'll hit the fill, I'll fill it, that little area right there. Move it back and do a difference, delete everything. And now I've got my opening for that. And you can see that's how it looks. So we're good with that. So now I want to go ahead. Uh, now that's done. I want to basically take take this um, and I want to create this opening, this this container area in here. So I'll do a uh, I'm basically going to do an offset uh, on here, and I tried a couple different things here, and I eventually uh, landed on just create an interior shape and subtract it from the uh, original. I was going to try and do some kind of uh, inset, and it really just wasn't working out the way I wanted to. So I just created a curve on the, ins on the inside um, and uh, an offset curve and then joined it up at the, at the uh, very back side of it. You'll see that's kind of what I think I'm doing here. So there's the offset uh, curve right there. Okay, and it's not capped. As you can see, then I'm going to stitch it up. So do all that, do a join, uh, extrude it somewhere the way down and all the way down because I need to I'm going to actually radius the bottom edge there so I didn't pull it all the way down I moved it up just a little bit subtracted it and we're good to go so now I'll come in here and I'll go ahead and put that radius a little radius on it that it's going to need when it pivots out there it is so you can see that works pretty good it's going to actually put a little radius at the top too because that's certainly not enough room for the hand but when I started doing it I realized that it's just going to be too crisp and I'm probably going to lose a highlight edge up there, so I'm going to just leave it. And I'll take this bottom area and extrude it down so that it's a full, uh, a full opening. So let's do that. Here we go. So something like that, and it'll inside fill it, even though no one will ever see it. It's there. Okay. Uh, now um, let's go ahead and add a little key or power button or something here. I just basically took this surface and I uh, uh, did a trim and. You can see that uh, once I've trimmed it, uh, I've got a separate surface in there. And again, I'm going to use the same technique I used previously, where I take that surface and I extrude it. 
directly down. See, I just did that, delete the top. There it is. Select all of those things, Boolean union them. Let's go ahead and add a little fillet. I think it's 0.8 millimeters is what we use for that fillet surface there. Here we go. Looks good. And let's put the button in. The button, I'm just going to come here and grab this circle, or this uh, curve at the bottom, and do an offset, a uh, very free offset. There we go. Let's get it real close. Extrude that up to where we want the button to be. And then we can just, uh, at that point, we're going to add some little details to the button. So I'm going to isolate it. I'm going to put a sphere on it, a big sphere. Uh, I'm going to move that sphere, transform that sphere along the axis there. So I do something like that. Subtract it out. And there it is. Then go and add a fillet on that. And now our button's done. Let's color it orange. And our button's complete. So there we have that. Uh, so now the next step is uh, really all I need to do is just um, mirror all this and then Boolean union it together. So a couple quick steps mirrors it and just select things and hit the U key for union. Uh, at least that's the shortcut I have set up. And now that this is all done, uh, there we have it. We've got a full balloon. Here's our, uh, uh, here I was going to actually extrude these out a little bit as little feet. Uh, and I decided at the end not to. I was going to do it. And I looked at it and thought about it. But no, I think it's going to be a little too. It's not going to look right. So instead, let's just go ahead and put a few radiuses on them, on the bottom area here. So we'll just get that. Okay. So there we go. Maybe one millimeter radius, just a little tiny something or other. And that's pretty much it. Now, so the next step is. Uh, uh, I want to try and take it into Keyshot and render it. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, so uh, before we put it in Keyshot, let's go ahead and set some colors up. I set the top the top green, uh, top is green, so that we could give it a different texture, a different texture in Keyshot. Uh, now I want to export it, so I've selected everything. Uh, I'm going to choose a file name for my export, and I want to set the uh, the OBJ parameters up for exporting it. One thing you should know is that this, it's important that we keep this weld vertices along edges here. That's a real uh, uh, important thing here. I'm just showing you some examples. Divide larger than. So I'm making it a little bit tighter than that. So uh, angle 8 and then uh, make sure that's, that weld vertices along edges is connected or, or is checked and then go ahead and export this file. So once it's done we got exported, now we're going to open up in Keyshot, uh, start a new file in Keyshot, um, and here I'll just import the actual existing file that we just saved. Here it is. Uh, pretty much the default settings other than snap to ground. I want to make sure I forgot to snap it to ground in the previous one. I think it probably was, but I'll just go ahead and do that here since I'm not going to be re-importing it. Came in, filled the screen completely, so I'm going to go and say center and fit part. So now I can see the whole thing. So now there is our product. Now the first thing I'm, I'm, I want to do is I'm going to put a chrome texture on this, a real dark chrome color, uh, something that is extremely reflective. Because what I'm trying to do is set the edge, the round edges feature, on on here. So as you can see, uh, you know I'm selecting one of these objects. And uh, uh, this is the, the actual black object itself. And I'm messing with this rounded edges radius. And I'll, I'm, I'm trying to see, it's putting a little tiny bevel along these perfectly flat surfaces, the edges on these perfectly flat surfaces. And that's why we wanted to weld those edges in the previous setting. And so I keep playing with this until it's something that I know that looks about right. And because it's a reflective surface, I'm going to get a, a pretty good idea of exactly what the size of that bevel is going to look like. So. 0.25 is the number I kind of like for that, so I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to paste it to the top green uh, object as well. I'm going to paste it to this little glass, uh, uh, the glass surface as well. So I've basically set all those up to have a 0.25 radius. Um, now that's done, uh, let's go ahead and start to surface this. Uh, let's look for um, a Moltec pattern. I want to probably use something like a uh, a Moldtech pebble pattern, and as you see, when I drop it on, it just comes on way too coarse. 
So what I want to do is adjust, adjust the actual size of that. So I'll go into textures, class my X and Y. I don't want to adjust this independently. And I'll just kind of move, move the slider until I get close to where I like it. So that looks about good. I can still see a little texture, but it's, it's still big enough so that it, uh, it renders accurately. I can still have a little tiny bevel edge around the edge you can see. Then I'll go ahead and uh, add the same thing, the same texture to the top. This one I'm going to change a different color. Uh, but first, let's select the, this, this, uh, the original texture and let's copy from that the, uh, uh, the scale size, 0.282. Let's go to the top piece again and let's uh, collapse the scale and paste it there as well. So now we've got uh, that. Now I just need to change the different change of color at the top. So uh, we'll edit that. Uh, let's just use like a no, that's not going to work. Red, blue, too too intense. Uh, that might work. It's a little less intense. So it looks good. Although I'm not getting a whole lot of definition out of that. Uh, let's go ahead and change the button. Add a little roughness to it. It's more. This is a plastic. Even if it says advanced. It's a plastic uh, setting. We'll edit the glass. And we're not going to use solid glass. Uh, but we'll do two-sided. I was going to jack up the refraction, uh, ref refract refraction setting to get a little more highlights on it. Um, but uh, I think I think we're pretty good there. So now uh, I need to look at the actual uh, environment. So I'm going to drag this three-panel straight 2K environment. On one of my favorite ones. I like. It's a pretty good environment for all kinds of things. I'll set that up, uh, the view I want, and <clears throat> let's, uh, you know, we're not getting much definition off of this top, so let's go ahead and look at that, uh, let's move that environment around first to see if I can get any more definition off of there. I'm not really, I'm not going to go through a full-blown lighting exercise here, which you could do adding pin lights, but here what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack up the refraction so I can get a little more. Pull down the roughness, uh, actually go back to the regular refraction level, 1.5 and just pull the roughness down so I get a little more reflectivity off of that surface. And when I do that, you see that it's got a, I'm starting to get some more definition there. Once I get that, I can just move it into the kind of the center where I want it. Uh, let's go to the environment, let's put a white background, and let's go ahead and put ground reflections on it. I'm not going to insert a ground plane, uh, which I typically would do if I was doing a final rendering, but this is just good enough. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I've got you know that's the uh, uh, that's the key shot rendering of the uh, toolbox or whatever kind of box it is that, that we were creating. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.